this evening on House and Home, with Father's Day this weekend in mind, our wonderful Zala cooking chef, Chef Barry, shows us how to steam chicken wrapped in banana leaves. And if you're looking for a gift for your dad for Father's Day this Sunday, you may want to check out these portable power tools available at Bradwell stores. A very good evening to you all and welcome to House and Home. And yes, this weekend Sunday is Father's Day and I hope you all are planning something wonderful to celebrate Father's Day as a family. It's always nice to have something at home, but also consider options such as spending the day out at either Nature Park or at the Adventure Park and why not even begin the day enjoying breakfast at the PNU markets. You can do some marketing there if you're planning a huge cook up and then relax with some great cooked food sold there every Sunday. Well, that's just a couple of ideas I thought I'd share with you. Make it an enjoyable at least a day. Speaking of which, let's join Chef Vary for the Zana Cooking Show, cooking up something special for Father's Day. Good morning, natural viewers. Welcome back to another Zana Cooking Show on tonight. On tonight, by me cooking Zana chicken steam wrapped in banana leaves. We're by me using Zana chicken breast. 700 grams straight back. All Genex chicken breasts and come with premium quality cuts with Genex chicken, so I pull up all meat. Okay, so that's why we choose Genex chicken, because it's meatier, tastier, and juicier. Okay, now we go to the ingredients, blame me. Okay, now we cut them two black garlic, one tablespoon coriander, them all herbs, one teaspoon chili, we got three tablespoons coconut milk. One tablespoon lemon juice for me squeezing finish lemon. Okay, this lemon got one tablespoon fish sauce. This lemon plus sauce we get by give more flavor low. Zinc chicken baby. Okay, we got one tablespoon lemon zest or lemon skin or lemon when we chop chop lemon finish. Okay, this lemon cumin seeds same one flower spices too. By give more flavor low. Zinc chicken baby. Okay, first now you looking zinc chicken and me fillet in finish me roasting bull lemon. And we pull up long meat. Okay, now by me add him garlic, blame me go inside. Coriander, chili, coconut milk, lemon, fish sauce one time. Okay, lemon skin. Now cumin seeds, blame me. Okay, now by me stir it one time. Mix the water with them. Okay, all banana leaf too, and we ready them all finish. So, by me wrap it inside all banana leaves. Okay, first one. Put them in the middle. This is a little juice now. Mix, blame me, go inside. Okay, now we wrap him. Okay, I'm going to this recipe. Maybe you may use banana leaves. Okay, we pass it more soon. Okay, second one. This is a flour mix. Kind wrap him. Pass the rope. Okay, third one now. This lamb by me steam him so by give more flavor low. Genic chicken baby. If you now me got water and boil stuff. We me put up the wire on top so by me steam him. Okay. Me add in genic chicken baby wrapped in banana leaves. Okay, now you me put him genic chicken baby steam wrapped in banana leaves inside. 
The baby larum is steaming up for some 20 to 25 minutes. Okay, this is a good recipe where you can use him down low independence. Then you come to September, and independence blue meal. So good way you can celebrate him. independence day blue with the family blue. Okay, viewers, now the next chicken blue meal ready. Buy me rouse him. I'm going to put it on a plate now. Okay. This one. The tree. Okay, now by me open him. Oh, damn, this lamb game. Good, but nice, but smell. The Zinek chicken. Let me steam wrapped in banana leaves. Yes. Zinek chicken, let me steam wrapped in banana leaves. We're using Zinek chicken breast, 700 grams straight. Jinek chicken, Mr. Chusim, because meatier, tastier, and juicier. Something different yet simply prepared, this can be cooked up at home as a special Sunday lunch or even dinner. Thank you once again, Chef Viari, for that wonderful Zenag recipe. Look forward for your next cook up next time on Zenag Cooking. More on house and home in a moment, so stay tuned. Welcome back. Now here's one question. How many of you car owners are well versed on owning a vehicle? Just like as humans needing food as a source of fuel to provide us energy for us to keep going, so does all vehicles in the form of petrol or diesel. But that's not all that, is, that we need. Just like our bodies that require a certain amount of vitamins and minerals to sustain our overall well-being and vital organ functions, vehicles require something similar. All its necessities can be found under the bonnet or your vehicle which feeds the rest of your vehicle so it can be driven well on the roads. So what else do we need to feed our cars to keep them well maintained? And how often do you need to visit the car doctor? Check this out and I'm certain you and I will learn a thing or two or how best to take care of our vehicles. Tonight I have Vincent with me who is a professional mechanic and he will be telling me about the importance of keeping my vehicle safe. Good evening, Vincent. Good evening, uh, Susan, and the viewers as well. Yeah, thank you for um, coming in and uh, talking to us about what's really under the hood. Can you tell us um, what is under the hood of a vehicle? Well, under the hood, you have a, a complete engine which is under the hood. Uh, basically, uh, with the engine component. Uh, with the engine, you have uh, there's so many electrical things which uh, all uh, connected onto the engine, and uh, uh, so so many parts that are very vital uh, uh, related to the engine. Yeah. So tell me about the engine oil. The with the engine oil, uh, the engine oil is uh, poured into the engine, which this is your uh, pillar cap. And uh, this is the dipstick where you check the engine oil. All right. So when you want to check oil, normally you have to, you know, pull the dipstick out. Uh, make sure that you use a rag. Uh, you dry it out and then put it back on. Uh, this is where you, you make sure that the oil levels are always uh, on the, uh, the specified uh, uh, marks. You know. So in this case, you see, there's a, a full mark and you've got a low mark. So basically, this is your way you check your OLA. But since we have different vehicles, like uh, we've got automatic vehicles, the manual ones, we also have um, the ones that feed on diesel and petrol. Do they all use the same type of um, oils or do they differ? Well, with the uh, uh, 
There are certain vehicles, uh, some have manual drive and some have automatic drives. Uh, with the automatic drives, you, uh, there's a fluid which they call automatic uh, transmission fluid. And uh, with the manuals, they use a uh, uh, gear well, which is much more heavier than the transmission fluid. And uh, with the mechanism, uh, the manuals, you, 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 you're a driver yourself, uh, and you know the manuals, you use clutch to uh, change your gears. Uh, with the automatic, you know, they uh, self-change, you know, it's automatic, so you don't need to change the gears, you just put it on drive. Uh, only certain areas where you have to change, you can always put it on shift, and uh, put it on, especially when you're going up here, so that's, basically an automatic. System. So with automatic and the manual vehicles that we have, the brake fluids, are they the same or do they differ? Uh, yeah, yeah, basically you use the same fluid. Okay, where do we find the brake fluid? Uh, this of is where your brake fluid is. Uh, that's uh, only for automatics, you find that they have only one uh, reservoir. Right. With, uh, one uh, reservoir bottle uh, with the clutch. Uh, there's two. You have a smaller one, which uh, which is called a master, clutch master cylinder. Uh, in this case here, we have automatic, and we don't have a clutch uh, uh, clutch master on it. This is your brake master cylinder. Uh, when you doing your checks, like every morning, you make sure that this uh, the master cylinder reservoir doesn't run out of fluid. Uh, make sure that they they uh, remain in the maximum level. Yeah. In this case, well, this one is okay. This con little container here, uh, it's called a power steering uh, reservoir. Uh, this one is very, very important because uh, when you check, make sure that the fluid is enough in there. Uh, because if it's empty, then you feel that the steering will be very heavy because it's operating by, uh, with the, uh, the power steering system. You know? Uh, for this, this is your coolant. This is your uh, coolant for the radiator. That's your reservoir. And make sure that it's always, this container you know, it has to have, uh, make sure that the, the coolant is enough in there and the maximum level there. Okay, what does the coolant do? It, it's, um, it well, just goes straight down to the radiator. Yeah, basically, uh, the coolant is there uh, to, to make sure that your, your radiator doesn't uh, uh, rust. You know? Okay. It prevents rust. That's the basic thing. Okay. It doesn't prevent overheating of the radiator? No, not really necessary. But uh, really, it's very important. Sometimes when you're having a water pump problem and you've got water leaking, certainly that coolant doesn't help, you know? Mm, right. So you make sure that your fan operates and make sure there's no water leaking, you know? Okay. Uh, but in this case, because it's a new car, Obviously, won't have any problem with that. What's the um, alternative if there's no coolant? Well, water, uh, normal water is okay. Uh, tap water, brain water, and make sure that you have water in there. Without, you know, without water, certainly you'll have a problem with uh, uh, low in water if, uh, with a radiator. Mm. All right. How about this one? What is this cylinder here? Uh, that's that's your wiper bottle, wiper washer bottle. Mm -hmm. So these two, when you're doing your checks, uh, every morning you make sure that there's water in, in this case here. This one's almost empty. We're not quite done yet, more on Under the Hood right after these messages. Once again, we have um, different vehicles that we use, like um, as we mentioned, automatic and manual. Tell me a little bit about the batteries. Do they are they the same? Do they use the same batteries, or are they different levels of or types of batteries that we need to use for different vehicles? Well, basically, all the batteries are the same, but certain vehicles have different sizes of batteries. 
Uh, in this case here, we have a, uh, it's a N, uh, N50 uh, battery, which is, uh, 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 that's the normal size for the, this type of cars. Uh, with the batteries, with the automatics, you have to make sure that your charging system operates. And uh, uh, this is your alternator, which is the one that's charging this battery. So make sure that it's operating. Uh, later, we'll, uh, we'll go into the water and I'll show you where the, uh, the battery light uh, 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 eliminates, you know. So with the, the automatics, like I said, make sure that your charging system is OK. Sometimes uh, your charging system will be OK, but then your battery is starting to lose uh, uh, energy, you know, so which means that uh, the cells are already going, you know, so it makes sure that if you start having a problem uh, starting like every morning, uh, which means you know that the battery is not only in charge. So you will have to, you know, uh, get a new battery as soon as possible, ASAP. Yeah. Uh, but if you if you get a the thing that I would like to advise is that if you're having trouble, like uh, like every morning, like sometimes you probably might uh, okay uh, starting problem. Eh? So you make sure that you get someone to have a look at it. But especially uh, when ladies are driving automatic cars, you know. The cars, it's very, you know, sometimes, you know, you'll be concerned as well, eh? Because especially your husband will say, oh, she's, you know, I'll make sure that my wife is, you know, in the safe uh, hands and, you know. So you make sure you get someone to have a look at it, a, a professional guy, uh, to give you a better advice. With the battery, the battery is the one that uh, starts your vehicle and uh, it's the one that uh, uh, gives uh, power to the starter motor to to have your engine turned over. Okay, so this is your starter motor. So, like I said, so it's there's so many ways that you might uh, come into problems with batteries, like electrical side. So, make sure you have your battery checked, charging system checked. Make sure that your starter motor is alright, so you don't run into problems here. So that's basically very important uh, for automatics. But with the manuals, you'll never have any problems because although it's flat, but if people who knows how to uh, start a manual car, then they have to either jump start or they push start. So uh, with the automatics, you cannot do anything. <laughs> yeah. How often do we check the water level or the fluid levels on, on our battery? Well, uh, with batteries, uh, you can always check them like every service, uh, like I would say three months would be better. Uh, like if, you, if you're doing your oil changes, uh, filter changes, um, you also have your battery checked. Uh, you make sure that your, some batteries are not visible. Late. In this case here, you have a check light. Uh, with some batteries, you don't have it. But you'll have lines on the side here. Like for this one here, it's black and you can't tell whether it's got water in there, but this is a dry cell battery. Okay, so with the batteries like Rocket, Yokama, they have uh, uh, water levels. So uh, when you uh, check that your battery water level is low, uh, there's always battery water sold at the, uh, the auto parts. Uh, so uh, sometimes, you know, probably used to have water, but I, I, I rather prefer to use uh, uh, battery water. So that's it. Uh, like I've already said, uh, explained that uh, some batteries, you know, you, you can't uh, you can see the water level. Eh? But uh, with the ones that are clear, they have low and uh, uh, maximum uh, level. Uh, if the water is low, you make sure that that water is uh, up to that uh, level so that you don't have uh, battery uh, losing its uh, or discharging or losing energy. Eh? Okay. So Vincent, say I'm in the village and I don't have access to the auto parts. Um, what, a, what can I use to fill up my um, battery? Well, with emergency reasons, I'd rather use the creek water or maybe temp water if there's no rain. Right. Mm. Uh, so, so that won't damage 
the vehicle, it's okay to use the water to refill? Well, I, I won't, I won't uh, guarantee that, but uh, if I were you, if it really takes me to town, I, I, I will source for a new battery. Uh, basically, I'd like to advise uh, the owners of the vehicles that uh, especially uh, uh, engines, uh, when, they, uh, when they are running the engines are getting very, very hot, you know, so they, all, they go as far as uh, uh, 90 degrees, you know, that's very, very hot, you know. But uh, when you uh, experience uh, overheating, uh, you have a gauge uh, which is on your dashboard, uh, temp, uh, temp gauge, which tells you coal, uh, you got halfway mark, and you got uh, a H mark, which is hot. So if you, uh, while uh, driving around and you experience uh, uh, your gauge rising up, uh, passing the halfway mark, obviously you, uh, you're having uh, uh, cooling uh, system, you know, problem, eh? So, so you rather, you, you rather uh, seek for, uh, or go to a nearest workshop and uh, ask them if they can assist you uh, on that side, uh, overheating side, ask them if they can advise you, uh, explain to you why. And uh, in most cases, if you, uh, it's, you gotta take cautions, uh, especially on the radiator side. Once the, some people they go and they try to they stop on the side of the road and then they try to check the radio and which is not safe for especially uh, ladies and uh, some men who don't know about vehicles so it's better to just park on the side and call someone you know and then they can uh, speak to them over the phone or if you have a mobile phone call them and tell them, oh, this is what am I going to do? Do I have to park on the side and open the radio? Uh, and they'll, they'll, they'll give you a better advice, but don't try to go yourself. Uh, try to open the bonnet and uh, 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 try to uh, uh, inspect what the, the problem is. And don't try to open the, uh, the radiator because on the radiator cap, it certainly tells you uh, cautions. So which, you know, you have to read before you do anything. What's there to indicate to us that uh, we're running low on fluids? Well, when you, you have your lights which indicates on the dash when you put the ignition uh, on, and which I will show you. So this is your ignition. So when you, when you turn the ignition on, it, it tells you or shows you your battery light and uh, oil light, and uh, you got your fuel gauge. That's your, so when your fuel, fuel is low, uh, when it's below E, there's a light which uh, shows. It's an orange light. It blinks, so it gives you a warning uh, to uh, to go uh, to the nearest service station, uh, server to uh, to have your uh, vehicle refilled. Uh, this is for your temp gauges, uh, which I've uh, explained to you earlier on. Uh, that's uh, the C, which is uh, coal. And uh, the, that's your halfway mark there, and that's your H. H uh, is when the engine gets very, very hot. Uh, with uh, most uh, new vehicles, they have these uh, heat sensors, or they call it temp uh, temperature uh, sensor. Uh, when the engine is overheating, it just cuts the engine out. Uh, uh, and also, it, it uh, also shows, uh, like this orange light here, it, it already indicates that there's a faulty uh, uh, tail lamp, uh, which is good. And also, uh, the engine light comes uh, comes on as well. So the, the engine light comes on when there's a faulty engine. Now to some of you, that may be quite a fair bit to take on, but I sure learned quite a number of things that I should take note of or pay more attention to. A great deal of what you just watched requires you, the driver, to ensure that your vehicle is fueled, well-oiled, all fluids topped up regularly, and parts checked or attended to when needed to be attended to. Owning a vehicle is a costly exercise, but if you take good care of it, not only it will serve you well and save you a kina here and a kina there, but it will last you a long time. Enough of cars? Now are you looking for a gift for your dad for Father's Day? 
Well, Jane from Brian Bell will have that one gift in mind, especially if your dad enjoys playing the role as handyman around the home. Power tools can be quite handy. Check out the various range of portable power tools that Brian Bell has in store that's coming up right after these messages. Good evening viewers and welcome to another episode of House and Home with Brian Bell. I'm your host Jane Takilala. Hyundai power tools are manufactured throughout the world to the highest quality standards and is expected as one of the world's leading brands. Power tools are classified as either stationary or portable. Portable power tools have obvious advantages in mobility and are used in trade industries, construction sites, in the garden or around the house for small DIY jobs such as drilling, cutting, grinding, sanding and many more. So tonight I will be showcasing some of the portable power tools which are so affordable and since Father's Day is around the corner would make perfect gifts for the DIY dads and of course for the stay-at-home moms who wouldn't want to be waiting for that carpenter to fix that broken cupboard you could just do it yourself. Our next product the circular saw is one of the most common power tool used today. The circular saw is a power saw using a tooted or abrasive disc or blade to cut different materials using a rotary motion spinning around. You could use this for repairing your steps or damaged staircase just by measuring and cutting. The circular saw is mainly used for cutting different materials depending on the job type and is and held or portable in this case. The blades are specifically designed for making rib cuts, cross cuts or a combination of both. The circular saw features aluminium base that supports the tool when in use, quick release base for adjusting the depths, blade size of 210 millimeters which can allow you to cut across up to about 50 millimeters of timber, maximum cutting depth of 75 millimeters, power rate of 1800 watts, power input of about 240 volts, can go up to a number of loads of about 5300 revs per minute which can cut through timbers promptly, easily and safely. As a safety release button or switch to prevent interrupted movements. Kickback is the sudden reaction or misaligned saw blade causing an uncontrolled saw to lift up out of the workpiece towards the operator. So it's wiser to take precautions by reading user manuals before use and of course by wearing the correct safety clothing. Our next product, the 710 watts jigsaw power tool, is a jigsaw made up of an electric motor and a reciprocating saw blade. A jigsaw is a versatile power and is useful in cutting shapes in a variety of materials, especially curved shapes. It features a compact size, low weight and outstanding handling ensures perfect control and optimum user comfort. Has a powerful 710 watts motor and variable speed making even hard jobs easier. Has a built-in laser guide to easily follow and make jobs easier. Has a power input of about 240 volts. The saw makes turns or full turns between 500 to 3000 revs per minute which completes any job efficiently and faster has a cutting capacity of 80 mm in wood and 8 mm in metal. The impact drill is more versatile and can be used as a screwdriver for screwing and unscrewing by using the reverse or forward functions of the power tool. It's perfect for concrete homes to mount shelf brackets on the wall simply by using the hammer function of the power tool. It uses a motor or compressed hair to rapidly and repeatedly deliver rotational and impact forces, providing considerable speed and productivity advantages. It features a powerful input of about 710 watts, has a 13 mm keyless chuck, which you can insert up to 13 mm various size drill depending on your type of job, has a power input of about 240 volts, has variable speed where the user can increase speed and it can make 
a full turn of between 0 to 3,000 revs per minute and of course depending on the type of job. Finish sanders come in various sizes and are used for polishing, shaping and smoothing wood and other surfaces such as metal and plastic. Most often using an abrasive covered belt or disc. Sanding can be done by hand but when one speaks of a sander, one generally means an electric sander. This product is perfect for restoring old furniture or giving a fine finish before the paint or varnish job commences. So if you have old looking timber furniture in your house, why not change the look by investing in a finished sander? It features a powerful 350 watts motor which offers power to tackle large sanding jobs, aluminium durable sanding plate that lasts longer, variable speed for different sanding depending on the type of job, and since it's not a single speed, the user can increase speed whenever he wants to. Features a dust box and auto dust extraction function for a cleaner, healthier work environment. Soft grip handle for more comfortable hold and more user control. A grinder is a power tool which is able to cut metal and grinds at the same time. Since most of us Papua New Guineans love to spend time in our gardens, it's ideal for every home for sharpening gardening tools. It's compact, portable and so safe to use. It features a powerful power input of 710 watts, has a disc size of 125 millimeters which does not wear off quickly, has a spindle lock which makes it easier for user to replace the blade, runs 11,500 revs per minute which is super fast and yet very safe to use. Comfortable user handle. All of the products mentioned tonight come in various sizes to suit personal needs. If you want to own more than one of these products, then why not invest in the 4-in-1 cordless power tool kit? So start planning now and head on down to your nearest Brian Bell Home Center to pick up that perfect gift for your dad. So now you know you can turn to us simply because you are backed up by Brian Bell's warranty, service and spare parts. So remember, great products, great prices, that's Brian Bell. Until next time, I'm Jane Takilala, good night. Fantastic! If your dad is a DIY kind of guy, then you can't go wrong with those power tools as a gift. They even come in a variety of sizes, which means even I can do stuff around the house as well. Well, that all depends if my folks at home trust me enough, that is. Thank you, Jane, and look forward to the next week's Pride Belt segment. More on house and home in a moment. Welcome back. Lately, we have seen property development and road construction within PNG growing at an alarming rate, and no doubt you would have seen several teams of guys working at gadgets on tripods. These teams are called land surveyors, and their jobs are quite vital in terms of providing accurate land positioning. Joining me today is Cole Henny. Cole is a registered surveyor himself, and he's also a financial member of the Institute of Surveyors of PNG. Uh, joining him as well to, to talk about the instrumentation and the equipment that our surveyors use out in our everyday work uh, in our profession is Luther Sipperson, our survey general, whom I introduced last week in last week's show. Um, so I'll, I'll let you gentlemen to um, make a way to the public. Our instrumentation and equipment, these are just some of the equipment, by the way, um, that we surveyors use uh, when we do our surveys. Uh, thank you very much, James Murray. Over here, we have a surveyor's total station. The total station is the successor to the theodolite. Previously, the surveyors used the theodolite to measure angles, horizontal angles and vertical angles. But over here, and the distances were measured manually using a tape measure or what was called a chain. Nowadays, this successor to the theodolite and the chain incorporated us measuring our angles, both horizontally and vertically, and our distances also. And on top of that, it incorporates the data recorder, so it saves the survey from recording things manually. It's data manually. The data is now automatically recorded into this uh, total station here. It's a Topcon total station manufactured by Topcon Instruments from the US. With the data recorder here, you can be able to insert this 
flash drive into this here, instrument here. The data that you record in the field is stored within your memory card. And then you can be able to download that onto your computer using the proper software that you have for data processing. In this instance, uh, we're talking about CivilCAD, which has now been upgraded to call Magnet, an internationally sold software that, that is used by surveyors, engineers, and all people who do planning or construction in the field. Over here, we have the GPS data recorder. This recorder re records data from the GPS base over here and also from the, the rover. With the data which can be then downloaded onto your field laptop computer or on your desktop computers for data processing. Luta here will also introduce you to the handheld GPS system which he is holding with him. I'm holding a Magellan Explorist 510 handheld GPS. This GPS is used as a laser uh, instrument. It is used mainly for uh, tracking, game fishing. Uh, geologists also use this instrument to pick up the position that they, they actually pick up rocks in the bush. Okay, um, I am the regulator of all the survey instruments in this country. Survey equipment that is not authorized by my office, the office of the survey general, cannot be used for surveying. And this equipment has been used by so-called experts to pick up positions and use it as a equipment to measure boundary surveys. It is not authorized by my office. There is an instance, this equipment was used on the Highlands Highway. They are claiming to be 101% accurate. This instrument gives an accuracy of 10 meters, five meters to 10 meters, or even 20 meters. Whereas this one gives an accuracy of two millimeters, that much. This one gives you about from here to that uh, building over there. So that is the difference that this and that can achieve in terms of surveying. So I just want to inform the public that are viewing this program tonight, don't be misled by so-called experts who are using this handheld instrument to measure boundaries. This is unauthorized by my office. I authorized this GPS system here. And uh, it has been used uh, to uh, perform uh, uh, impact projects in the country. For example, the Highlands Highway. Somebody used this instrument claiming to achieve 101 percent. Who did the actual uh, quality assurance of that project? We cannot mi be misled to use equipments that are not authorized, that are not approved by the Office of the Surveyor General. This Hyper 2 GPS is the authorized equipment to conduct boundary surveys or conduct surveying in this country. The price comparison between the Hyper 2 global positioning system and the handheld GPS, these two receivers and the software cost about 300,000 kina. This one cost about 100 kina. So how can you conduct an impact project costing millions of kina with a 100 kina instrument? I authorize this equipment here. That is the one that is recognized by the Office of the Surveyor General. With these two GPS units, you could still use one as the base and the other as a rover to do big DTM surveys or topographic surveys of areas which the re recorder can be able to record data to a maximum of about 500 to 800 meters. All right, thank you, Cole, and thank you, Luther. That ends this segment for Institute of Surveyors of PNG on House and Home. We have one more segment coming up next week, which we will be joined by the President of the Institute of Surveyors himself, Mr. Tony Lubin. 
We hope that we have made you aware of all the equipment and the accessories that we surveyors use out there in, in the field when we do our surveys. If you'd like more information about the equipment that have been, uh, that have been demonstrated here today, you can contact Kohu or myself at Theatist, uh, which are Theatist are the, are the main and the sole resellers of uh, Theatist survey equipment and accessories uh, PNG wide. Landmarking or mapping with the use of GPS. Now you can get any more accurate in land positioning, measuring or constructing with the use of the total station, which is an upgrade from the Theodolites and the GPS base and the rover set, also not forgetting their reflector. You see, I was listening attentively to Mr. Kohu Hani when he was explaining. A wonderful insight there to the instrumentation and procedures on surveying. One house and home, so stay with us. Next week on House and Home, we take a closer look at how to plant a garden in a pot. We also find out more about the importance of keeping your cooking utensils clean and healthy for you and your family. We have for you also the preventative measures to follow when you have the flu, also highlighting the best remedies for you to take. And we get to see more on best quality buys at affordable prices over at Brand Bell Home Center. This is where the House and Home team and I will leave you, but before I say goodnight, another reminder to you all that this weekend is Father's Day and the team of House and Home and I wish you all happy celebrations and a happy Father's Day to all you fathers, godfathers and dads-to-be. Also taking place this weekend on Saturday, the Port Mosby International School will be hosting their pre-independent celebration at the school and the House and Home team along with the In Mosby Tonight team will be out there to join in the celebration, so we hope to see some of you there. He's wishing you a very pleasant evening and may the remainder of the week ahead be a productive and a satisfying one. Until next week, keep on the journey to a healthier you with those regular exercises, enjoying the outdoors and keep eating right. Good night.